It is a great day to come together to worship the God in spirit and in truth. And so many things have gone on in our lives and so many things that are happening with us. We just, God gives us testimony to be able to come here and say, Lord, thank you for another day. You got me through that week. You got me through that situation, that circumstance. And now I'm still standing. And it's because of your power uh, that I'm allowed to stand here. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of things to praise God for. God has done so many things for me, for family, for people I love, for things that I put my hands to. God is just in the blessing business, and he rewards his children. And that's why we ought to be able to show our love for our Heavenly Father. We are in the house of the Lord. We ain't on the outside. We in the house. Amen, somebody. And, and in the Lord's house is nothing but praise and thanksgiving and blessings. And God says, listen, just try me. He said, test me, and I'll pour out a blessing for you. Matter of fact, the blessing is so big that you won't even have the containers to be able to hold them. And so we ought to give God all the glory and praise for what he's done for us, how he has strengthened us, and given us the spirit. Because <clears throat> it's that spirit that keeps us going. And I want to thank God for that spirit. I just appreciate you, Edgewood. So much that you come here today. I love you. Those who are visiting, I love you too. Thank you for coming. Uh, if you're revisiting, uh, keep on revisiting. Until you come family, we're going to always accept you. The door's always open. Please just keep coming back and just bring some folks with you. Uh, and that's why we want to teach and preach and share messages that will enable someone to take something and just add a little bit more to their life than they had before they came in here. And that's what we have to do. We have to keep adding and keep adding and keep adding. And remember, we talked about that scripture. We're going to keep adding to your faith in 2 Peter. When Peter talks about that, uh, that uh, add to your faith diligence with all diligence and add virtue and add. Uh, is the word add is a symphony. That means that you got to create a musical piece that at the end culminates in love. Amen. And therefore, with these things, we got to add to our life. God asks us to do some things, too. And that's what we want to talk about today, about God asking us to do some do some things. So but I want to say uh, 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 thank my family for being here. Sister Wilkie, love you to death. Uh, appreciate her being with me in the ministry. This is a great blessing. Uh, we had a wedding yesterday. Um, this is just great. It reminded me of my relationship with my wife as I was officiating Troy and Ashley's wedding. Uh, it was a very good ceremony and uh, and it was just it was just really good. And uh it's just good to see folk find somebody uh, that they can spend the rest of their life with. Uh, over 7 billion people in the world, and you find that person that you're able to share. Like, it, is, it is a blessing. Uh, amen, somebody. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. So uh, we want to just keep them in our prayers. Uh, it's good to see Corey back from his uh, uh, struggles with his health and everything. Uh, one of the strongest people I know. Always fights back. Um, then he was at the, the, the ceremony yesterday. I said, man, they let you out. <laughs> it's good to see him and his strength and just keep uh, Sister Williams as well. Because uh, when, when it happens to him, it happens to her. And so she has not only a physical duty to help her husband and serve her husband, but there's an emotional and a spiritual component that comes with that. And so she has her challenges and she has to work through those things. And so, um, you know, you, you don't know who the strong person is because uh, the, they both have this, this, that inner strength that they have. And they're just a blessing to us and a, an example. When I get sick, I don't even want to talk to Corey and Faith. No more. I, don't, I don't even want to complain about being sick. When I talk to them, it was like, it's like, how you doing? I'll be like, <coughs> I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. I don't even want to talk to them because they're so strong and a great example. So we just thank God for them. Uh, being an example of, for us. Um, pray for the Evans family. Uh, Jack Evans Sr. passed away. Uh, he was a great debater in the Brotherhood, and um, there is no other information I have as far as the services that will be posted. Uh, his son, Jack Jr., um, well, let's keep uh, that family in prayer uh, in the Brotherhood. Um, he meant so much to Southwestern Christian College, served as the president there. Um, he was a great true evangelist, went around. Uh, de de and, and debating anybody who wanted to debate, that man would, would debate. Um, and I learned a lot from his teaching. Um, I actually had his home number and called him. If I had an issue, I will call him and uh, uh, talk to him about some things. And he helped me through the ministry um, as well. He was a great influence 
uh, in, my, in my preaching and in the way I study and the way uh, that we see things. Because you gather as you go along. And uh, so he meant a lot to, to me and Sister Wilkie. Um, and so we just want to keep that family uh, in your prayers. Uh, I ain't going to be too long today. If you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter 2, 12 through 13. Uh, and if you don't have a Bible, uh, look at someone, look at the screen um, so that we can all see what thus says the scriptures. Philippians 2, 12 through 13. It says, wherefore, my brethren, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So this morning's sermon is just simply working out your own salvation. Working out your own salvation. There is a uh, census that, um, which is true, is that we cannot save ourselves. Uh, anytime we see the word work and salvation, um, you know, we have a some have a uh, a, a, a debate or a, a, a spirit of well, we can't say that we can't work out our salvation because it is God who does everything. And there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. And that's true. We can't save ourselves. Uh, we can't die on the cross. We can't do those things. And and so work is a deed and work means that you're earning it and work means this and work means that. So when they see the name, when they see the, the word work and, and salvation, uh, uh, they say, well, you, you can't work. But the Bible tells us to work out our own salvation. So how do we explain uh, Paul's asking us to work out our own salvation if, in fact, we can't save ourselves? What is the work involving? I'm here to tell you that if Paul says we need to work out our own salvation, if the scriptures say we need to work out our own salvation, then there's something that we have to do. Uh, we have to work. So we can't make it fit our ideology of what work means. Paul says there's some things that you're going to have to do. Now, I'm here to tell you that no human effort can save anybody. No, no human effort alone can save anybody. I know that 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 God, uh, when he went and saved the children of Israel, God used Moses to do it. He used Moses and Aaron's staff to do the plagues. He used Moses and Aaron's staff to split the sea. It was God that opened the sea, but Moses had to lift his staff for the sea to open. There are plenty of things in the Bible. David killed Goliath. Well, it was God helping David out, but David still had to put the rock in the sling to kill Goliath. We have Gideon going against only with only 300 men going against the Amalekites, trying to destroy the enemies of God. God could have did it on his own if he wanted to, but he used Gideon to destroy the army. It's always been that way. God has always used human effort to help him in his task or what he was trying to accomplish. He, had, he could have done everything on his own, but he allowed us to be a part of his success. And therefore, you have human effort involved in God's work. It has always been that way. It has been consistent through from the beginning, from Genesis to Revelations. We have always been able to be a part of God's work. The Bible says that God is the one working in us. We have to work it out. God works in you so you can work it out. And therefore, there are some things that we are going to have to work out when it comes to our salvation. Why? Because we got an enemy that we are fighting. And the enemy that we are fighting is organized, has a plan, has plenty of, 
of, of army. He has, he has a big army. And God says, no, no, we are fighting a spiritual battle. So we're going to fight a spiritual battle. That means that we have to be prepared. And in order to be prepared, it sounds like we got to do something to be prepared because we believe that once we, that once we saved, uh, God does everything, that we don't have to do anything. There's no effort in us. We don't have to do anything at all. It's all about God. And I understand the concept that it's all about God, but I don't see in the Bible, except for maybe uh, creating man, um, even when God created man, we didn't have nothing to do with that. That's right. That wasn't a work of man, creating Adam and Eve. But to procreate, God worked with man to procreate because man was given a command to procreate and subdue and have dominion over the earth. Because there is what we said in Bible study uh, last week. There is God has a will, but he also has that's unconditional and he has a will that's conditional. His unconditional world will is when he came and says, uh, God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Whoever should believe in him. When God sent his only, we didn't have anything to do with that. Right. That wasn't about whether we agreed or not. It wasn't about that. But if you want to be saved, he says, but whosoever believe in him, that's a conditional will of God. It is God's will that all men are going to be saved. But we know for a fact that not, not all men are saved. That's conditional. So God has a will. Some of his will we have nothing to do with. But others are conditional based on what we do. That means we have access to some power, but we got to be able to use that power. As I said, we are in a spiritual battle. In 1 Timothy 1.18, he says, This charge I, and this charge means a command, I commit unto thee, son Timothy, this is Paul writing to Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, uh, that thou mightest war a good warfare, which means that we are in a fight. So he is commanding him that you're going to have to fight. Anytime I remember being in a fight. I had to get prepared for it. I had to be ready. If I'm going to get into a war, that's a battle. There's preparation on my, on my side. Now, I know that the fight, God is going to win the fight because the fight is already won. Listen, God already destroyed the fight of sin. And so God did that already. I mean, the battle was won. You read Revelation. Revelation is about what God had already done. The war has been won. He's defeated death. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that by defeating death doesn't mean that all men won't die. That's right. God has created and allowed men to be saved, but not all men are going to be saved. That's right. Why not? Because some men won't allow for human effort. Mm -hmm. It takes some human effort to accept the plan of salvation, to accept the gospel. Right. It, why, why do we need the battle? Because Satan is the enemy. And if Satan is the enemy, then we're going to have to prepare ourselves and we're going to have to prepare. So that means we have to study. Uh, we have to we have to go through some things. We we, we, we got to we got to prepare ourselves mentally and spiritually. And these are the things that we have to do. If we don't do those things, we're going to lose the battle. The battle doesn't fight itself. The battle that's already fought is God overcoming and taking the sin off of man. Jesus Christ died on the cross. Now the punishment that God was going to destroy mankind, he, he, he did it to Jesus. Jesus rose up. So now God says, okay, I'm okay. Now we can, me and man, uh, mankind, who kind can have a relationship now. Why? Because of the work that Christ did. But there's going to be a battle because Satan does not want you to have a relationship with God. In 2 Timothy 2, 15 through 19, we know that the Bible says, listen to this, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, something we have to do, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So he says, stay away from it. And their word will eat as doeth a canker. You know what canker is? It's gangrene. You know what gangrene is? Gangrene is a death of a location in your body that can spread. 
Gangrene, what gangrene does is it blocks off blood flow. Now, if you can understand that on a spiritual level, if you don't get rid of sin disease, he says, this is what Paul uses the word canker. You're going to end up with gangrene. You're not going to have any blood flow. And therefore, you're going to end up deceased because you haven't done some things. Why? He says, in their word, this is what ungodliness, when ungodliness creeps, it becomes gangrene. And says, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus? Well, who are these folk? These were folks that used to be they were part of the faith. They were baptized. He says, who concerning the truth have done what? They've erred, saying that the resurrection is past already. And they overthrow the faith of some folks. Right? They took some folks with them. Nevertheless, the foundation of God uh, stand ashore, having this seal, that the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ Depart from iniquity. Well, I thought that now that I'm saved, I don't have to do anything. This was says study to show thyself approved so you don't get gangrene. Why? Because ungodliness will increase if you don't do anything. You don't study. Gangrene comes in, cuts off circulation, cuts off knowledge, and you begin to perish away. You know why? Because you haven't. You're not doing anything. It's something that we have to do. It doesn't mean that it's not accessible. The spirit is accessible. Matter of fact, the spirit is tabernacling with you. It is inside with you. It lives within you, but you got to use it. Right. right? You have to be able to use it. So he says, listen, they, these two folks have erred. So you can fall away from grace. Yes, sir. I read that. Come on. You could become a Christian. Yes, sir. And still being condemned when, G when the law comes back. You know why? Because you err from the truth. Why? Not studying or using the word incorrectly. Saying things that the Bible doesn't say. Okay? So we got to what? We got to work that stuff out. Well, what else we got? This more stuff that I want to show you. Hebrews 2, 2 through 3. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression, that's sin, and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we, what? Escape. Escape if we, what? Neglect. Neglect. Oh, you mean to tell me that now that I'm a Christian, if I don't do anything, guess what happens? On, Brother Sasser, you got some properties? You ever seen a house that was never taken care of? Just let it go. Don't do nothing. Come on, Come on. When you neglect the house, you know what the house does? It begins to deteriorate. That's right. It begins to what? Fall down because neglect is sin. So therefore, I can't neglect my salvation because neglect is just as bad as sinning because that's what you're doing. So that means you mean to tell me, Lord, I'm a Christian now. So I don't have to study. I don't have to listen to the preacher. I don't have to do anything and just neglect your salvation. Just neglect your spirituality and watch what happens in your life. When you begin to neglect, you actually begin to fall deeper and deeper uh, in the transgression. That's what happens, because what you are neglecting is what? Salvation. What am I neglecting? The salvation that you have. You see, we got to understand that we have salvation, but we can't neglect it. And it says, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard him. So their transgressions had to do with them being neglectful. Look at it, 3.1. Three, three, I want to add a verse in there. He says, wherefore, holy brethren. Now he's talking to Christians. I just want you to know. Partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. The last time I looked, profession was a work. Profession was something that you, a responsibility. When God has given us salvation, he makes a stewardship of it. You remember the, 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 the parable of the talents in Matthew 25? God gives them something and expects what? Increase. He expects a return. So the return has to come by us doing the work in the profession that he has given us to do which is partially keep ourselves saved and save souls. Well, how do we keep ourselves saved? Maintenance. Come on, 
How do we say? We got to go out and save us. Why? Because we have a profession. That's right. Okay? You think your profession is nursing. That ain't your profession. That's your, that's your job. As a Christian, you're supposed to what? Save souls. That's, right. Amen. that's the one God has given you. Do it with the job that God has given you. But your job is to save souls. That ain't just evangelism, team. That's right, that ain't just evangelism ministry to save souls. That's your job. Why? Because God has given that to you. I want to add something on to that scripture. It says uh, in 12 and 13, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart. Notice he's talking to Christians. He ain't talking to people on the outside. And departing from what? The living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be what? Hardened through deceit of sin. Hardened has to do with what happens is, is has to do with the word insensitive. So what happens is, here's how this works. I got to go back to the pad, I think. Here's how this works. I got to come down here because I'm thinking. Folk who just come to church on Sunday, what happens is, if it's not exercise, if you neglect it, all of your time will be spent around people who are not from the church. Here's how it works. Your time, your conversations, all that stuff will be around the folk who are not a part of the church. And because of that and neglect and your spiritual house begins to deteriorate, gangrene starts setting in. That's locational. Because when gang, if it sets in your foot, the foot has to come off so it doesn't affect the rest of the body. But if you don't fix it, it begins to spread. And so now, because you hang around the folk more than you hang around the church folk, on, you become insensitive to sin. Come on, preacher. Mm -hmm. Sin don't bother you no more. All right. The strip club, it don't bother you no more. Mm -hmm. When you first got baptized, it was a little bit. But now that you're hanging out with them, because... You know, the folks that do that always got somebody that want to go with them. So you'll hang around the folks that think like that. They think the way they think. So what happens? When something sinful happens, you know, it's, it's no thing. So you're not sensitive to it no more. It becomes disheartened. The, the gospel is, it, you become so disheartening that, that the word of God doesn't affect you and therefore Sunday is just something, an appointment that you have. I got to get my church in. Right? So that I can stay, you think you're staying connected. This is one of Satan's tricks. Right? Because Satan don't mind you going to church sometime. He don't mind you going to church sometimes. It's okay. He don't mind having a piece of you. He, he don't even want to have, he, he's okay with having them. He don't want, if I don't have all of Brother John, that's good as long as I got some of them. The opposite way, God don't wants all of you. Okay? He wants all of you. Why? To, to build up that, 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 that spiritual strength that you need. So, so look, at this, look at the scripture in Hebrews 5. He says, but strong meat. Belong to them that are full age. Even those who by reason have use of their what? Senses. Exercise. Just a pain. You know, you go to the gym. Well, she go to the gym. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, you go to the gym and you lift and lift and no, you, the muscles, your stuff be hurting, you be sore, but you don't see nothing. You go on, you lift, and you don't see nothing, you don't see, you don't see the results right away, so you stop. Because I know that word, I know what exercise means. When you go in to exercise, you say, I'm going to work out. Come on, Bree. <laughs> so, you know, it takes some diet. 
and takes consistent exercise to get the best results that you need. You got to change your lifestyle if you want to get that result. You got to exercise this. You got to have the right diet, a spiritual teaching. There's some things, there's some consistency. You have to change your lifestyle. So exercising has to do with working out. And if working out my own salvation, that's what he says. You must exercise what? Because he says, listen, uh, and the Hebrew says, you know, I want to tell you all about Melchizedek. But I can't because y'all still on Similac and you have not exercised your mind. You haven't exercised your spiritual. You're not even working out your salvation at all. You just believe that just coming and leaving and you just come and leave. You come and leave and you come and leave and you're not exercising anything. And the Bible says gangrene is setting in and you don't even know it. It's setting in. It starts at a location. See, gangrene doesn't start in the whole body all at once. Right. It comes from something happening. A disease begins to set in and then it spreads as it goes along. That's what gangrene is. And he says you have to be able to what? You got to exercise. That means that sometimes you read. You might not get it. Just like you lift weights and you don't see the results. You read. You don't get it. You read. You don't get it. You read. And then one day you read something and then boom, here come a muscle. <laughs> you know, you, you go, oh, let me get my short shirts on. Let me get my, you know what I mean? I got a little, little something in there. I got some peak in the street going around there. And you start changing because you want that to show. And that's what you're doing. And it says exercise. And then you get to work out. There's a spiritual workout. It's a spiritual workout. It takes some energy, though. You got to do something. You can't just come and sit. You got to be involved because guess what? When you when you when you're exercising now, when you want to go to uh, uh, McDonald's, and I'm messing with now. Now I love McDonald's. Like, he probably got some coupons in his pocket right there. <laughs> you got a you got a, a trainer, right? He gonna tell you stop eating at McDonald's yeah. or fast food restaurants. You know why? Because that's going to go against the work you just put in. See, we are putting some work and then you go home and then eat uh, a whole pie that Sister Wilkie cooked. Right. That's why I'm like I am. You go home <laughs> and I, you know, do some exercise and I come home and it's that granny apple uh, pie and just cook and it's tearing up the house. The smell just tearing up the house. Oh, my God. You know, I could I can't help it. And then you and, and then you eat it. Then I get me some ice cream. <laughs> and what happened, Brother Tillery? Everything that I just did is gone. So here I am worshiping God in the church, singing a song, studying the Bible, saying amen. And then I go right back out dancing somewhere. In the club, twerking. Not working. Come on, twerking and not working. Donnie say twerking and not working. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother Mitchell, better put that on the on the. <laughs> That's one of those Donnie colloquials, right? The Donnie is as we call it, twerking and not working. Everything that you just did. You got pulled right back into the old lifestyle. You know why? You ain't exercising your faith. You know what's happening? You're not working out. Sooner or later, church becomes a nuisance. Ministry becomes a pain. Dad, get up for church today. Dad, I got to go. Dang, the church is doing this. I got to be at this event. Oh, man. And what's happening? Gangrene sitting there. Uh, come on, you see, the Hebrew church was apostatizing. Mm -hmm. Apostasy doesn't happen all at once. That's right. Apostasy happened what? It happened slowly. 
a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and a little, and then the next thing you know, you way out there. Like you go swimming in the current, just just like the sin, the current of sin takes you way out. And when you come up and look, you so far from the shore. It has to be worked out. Salvation has to be worked out. There's something that you have to do. When saying working out your own salvation doesn't mean that you're saving yourself. What you're doing is exercising with the equipment that God gave you. So you got to use God's equipment. You know, you start off, I don't know how much Eric can lift, but you start off with a hundred curling, curling. (laughs) You curl and you start off with a, with a hundred. But don't you know, if you want something to increase, you got to increase the weight. There's different exercises for different things. If you want to show a cut hair, you do more reps with light weight. So y'all ain't think I know all that stuff. I know it, I just haven't exercised it. <laughs> so, so that happens to us on a spiritual level. So that's why, you know, it'd be great, wouldn't it be great to have devotional not worship, but devotional service on Saturday mm-hmm. and invite the community to devotional yeah. where we have Bible study and teach about certain topics that's going on. That's right. yeah. Seeing some no communion because we're not in worship. We're not doing that. Devo- and, and, and as an attraction, right. Right. we work stuff. I'm just saying we, uh, we got to get the gospel outside the walls. That's right. We got to go outside the wall. I was just saying a devotional. How many will show up? Come on, Bree. How many of the church? That's something that, the, that, you know, the church has. To, it would look bad if we had that and then only two members show up, Corey. Right. 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 Just talk about the community want to know about marriage. Why can't we hold a marriage for the community on Saturday? Have a devotional, have certain topics. What's the next topic we're going to have? Let's talk about education. Let's talk about abuse. Let's talk about different things. And open it up to the community. Let the community know this is what we're doing. It's exercise. We just, we, all we're doing is we are exercise. Now, the increase belongs to God. Right? But God works through human effort. He does. He's always done that. It's not anything new. So when we say work out our own salvation, that's what we're talking about. We have to work out our own salvation. Now, in John chapter 6, 44, and you'll see the scripture uh, in this part, and we're closing now, uh, in the steps of salvation, from sinner to being saved, you see this particular slide has God's part and then it has man's part. And I I really chose this one because it fits the lesson. There's some things that God has done that we can't do. God sent his son. We can't do that. That was his plan. He figured that out. Uh, The God had figured that out in the beginning before the world was created that how they were going to do it. Jesus said it shed his blood. We can't do that. We our blood. We can't cure sin with our blood. That blood had to be from Jesus. The word is revealed in the spirit. The spirit reveals the word in John 16, 3. All that has to do with God's part. He's done done his part. But God doing his part doesn't make you saved. That's right. So, well, we are all, no, we are all not saved. There's something that has to be done. Even in the beginning of becoming a Christian, there's something that you got to work out. You got to hear the gospel. And if you look at John 6, 4, 4, it says, no man can come to me. This is what he says, except the father, which is, listen to Jesus, which has, which has sent me, draw him. Now I'll say it again. No man can come to me except the father, which has sent me, draws him. Okay, he says, nobody can come to me unless they're drawn. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to raise him up 
at the last day. Who are you going to raise? The one the Father sends? It is written in the prophets, and they shall be what? Taught of God. Well, what do you mean taught? What is taught? How are you going to draw? Through teaching. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and have learned of the Father cometh to me. How are you going to draw them? With the gospel. But giving them the gospel doesn't mean that they've learned. They've heard it. If he was just says everybody that hear it will be saved, then we would be fine. But there's some teaching that has to be learned in order for you to even come to him. So how you be drawn? With the gospel. That's why you say, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all right. men unto me. How are you going to draw? The word has to do with fishing. Come on, preacher. The word draw has to do with a fisherman throwing in bait, putting it in the water, and drawing a rod. That's right. And he says, I'm going to draw all men to me. How are you going to do it? With teaching. But guess what? There's a part that you have to do. You have to accept it. He can't save you if you don't accept the teaching. He can't do that part for you. As I said before, God can save you, but he can't make you spiritual. That's right. Come on, preacher. You have access to it. You have to become spiritual. Why? By adding things to your faith. But he can't make you spiritual. Spiritual has to do with you obeying the gospel and remain faithful. The Bible says after you save, you ought to remain faithful. That's uh, Revelation 2.10. You must remain faithful. Why? Because you're going to be challenged. So he says that uh, in order for us, in order for a person to be saved, he has to come to God. He, but he's drawn to God. So if he's drawn to God, that means somebody's got to preach. Somebody's got to teach the gospel. So how are they going to learn? God is not speaking to people directly no more. So that means that mankind, that I, we have a part that we have to do, those who are saved, we have a part. That's human effort. So therefore, human effort and God in the combination as working together, the two working together is what's going to save folks. So the question is, have you been working out? And how have you been working out? I've never seen anybody that wants to develop a healthy physique or anything, uh, do it and say, well, I want to get chiseled up. I want to, I want to work. I want, I want to have, I want to lose this many pounds and don't do nothing. I've never seen somebody not totally neglect themselves and not take the steps that's needed to lose the weight that they want to lose and not do anything and expect the weight to just fall off. It doesn't do, it doesn't work that way. Working out your salvation has to do with you being partnering mm -hmm. with God. But when it comes to being saved, initially being saved, there's some things you got to do. He says you got to hear it. You got to hear Jesus is the Son of God. He is God the Son and he is the Son of God. And when you hear that he died for your sins, he came down and died for your sins because he had no sin. And because he had no sin, he became a perfect candidate for God to release his anger on. Because somebody had to pay for Adam and Eve's sin. You either related to Adam or you related to Jesus. You related to one of them. If you relate to Adam, that means you relate to Adam through flesh. And therefore, you can never be saved if you're always going to be related to Adam. Adam sinned. He said, you're going to die the minute you eat of the tree I told you not to eat of. Death passed through every man. So you're going to die and you're going to die with the sting of death, which is sin. But if you're in Jesus, you're still going to die. But you won't have the sting. The sting of sin will be removed from you because we all have that appointment to die. But who are you going to be related to? The Bible says Jesus is the second Adam. So he becomes the first fruit and then us after him. But in order to do that, you have to believe that he died for your sins. So that means that you have to what is called repent. 
Repent has two stages. The first stage of repentance has to do with recognizing the sin. The second stage has to do with being uh, remorseful That's right. about the sin that you just recognize that you're in. Come on, if those two things don't take place, there is no repentance. That's right. So that's something you have to do. What? I have to learn from the word of God that I am a sinner. Mm-hmm. And now remorse has to take place. That's right. Repent or you likewise shall perish. It's Luke 13, 3. Then the Bible says, guess what? I must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, how do you confess? Well, there's more than one way to confess. You can confess by saying, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I ain't saying that's the formula in the Bible, but I know I can read through the book of Acts and watch. How do men confess? What shall we do? I want to be saved. I want to get the sin off me. That's a confession. I'm a sinner. Uh, I, I, want, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's a confession. Because on the day of Pentecost, I don't see the words, uh, I believe that Jesus Christ is. God never made that as a formula. Confession has to do with a response that says you believe. I want to be baptized because I don't want to die in my sins and I know Jesus came to save me. It's confession. They were praying, men, what shall I do? Cornelius, he says... Cornelius, who wasn't a Christian, coming back from the Jewish temple from worship. Men came to him. Uh, uh, Cornelius uh, says, uh, the came, uh, uh, I think it was the angel came to him and said, listen, your prayers have come up as a memorial to God. What do I need to do? Send for Peter. Why can't you tell me, God? Because human effort That's right. is involved. In salvation. I'm not going to save you talking to you straight. Somebody's going to have to teach you the gospel first. Peter comes and tells him what the angel could have told him. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't his ministry. So he comes and tells him, sees him. He's speaking to him about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And therefore, this man actually realizes that he needs to be saved. And he gets baptized. Philip and the eunuch. God sent Philip to the eunuch who, and guess what happened? He was being baptized. Uh, uh, Cornelius was a centurion. So Philip was the, the eunuch coming from worship. And God sent Philip to him to preach to him, and he got back. He said, What's up? What do I need to do? And he's, Do you believe? Paul ran against some men who were baptized in another religion. If you was here this morning, you know what I'm talking about. And he says, well, that religion, that baptism in that religion, that's not the baptism of Jesus. That had a baptism of repentance. Mm -hmm. And they got rebaptized. Why? Because they were baptized in another religion. Mm -hmm. They weren't baptized into Christ. So Paul what? He rebaptized. You see how human effort always involves when we're working out our salvation? God work, uses us. We are his workmanship. That's right. He works in us so we can work it out. And God wants to put us on this. If we are, why are we his workmanship if he, can do it, if he can do it on his own? He didn't want to do it on his own. He wanted to use us. That's why we are his work. Why is he crafting us and shaping us and changing us? Why he's the potter working with the clay? Because he wants to use us. Come on, preacher. He says that we have we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What he's giving us something valuable because he wants to use us. Man, that's right. Human effort and God working together. Do you want to be saved from your sins? You got to first believe that you have them, recognize that you do have them, and be remorseful that you have sinned against God, the one and only true God. And you can work out your salvation right now, first of all, by being baptized in the watery graves of baptism. You become a Christian today. Just straight up Christian. Nothing on it, nothing before it. You can just be a Christian and serve the living God. Maybe you're here and you need to work out more often. 
Maybe you need to repent. Because repentance doesn't stop just because you became a Christian. That's right. Repentance is as you are a Christian to recognize sin and then be remorseful of it. That's, right. That's why you have the Holy Spirit. What it does is, is convict you to live right. Amen. So we need to work out our own salvation. Not that we, that God owes us anything, but it's a pleasure and a privilege and a great feeling to be working with the Lord and saving souls. Right. We're going to stay in the same song of invitation. Remember, working out your own salvation, you got to do it. God does not do that for you. You have to do that. He has already given you salvation, accessible. The Holy Spirit is now accessible. He has come because Jesus has sent him. And therefore, we have to remain faithful. We're going to sing the song of invitation. The lesson is yours. Thank you. You not, not to temptation.